Hi everyone and welcome to Traveler 360. We are here at Shabin in Media, Pennsylvania, joined by Christian, who is going to talk to us today about Guinness. So let's first start with the name of your bar here. What does Shabin mean? Shabin means speakeasy back in Ireland. Oh, very cool. So we are in a traditional Irish bar here in Media. And let's talk about Guinness. So what makes Guinness so special? Well, one for one is one of the lightest beers you can ever taste. It's delicious, malt forward, fluffy, uh, creamy at the same time. It's just delicious. It's just an easy sipping beer. Any time of the year is fine. Is there anything special about how you have to handle Guinness, so to speak? With care. Okay. <laughs> uh, honestly, it's just um, how you pour it. You're not trying to get a lot of air into it. You're when you're pouring it, you have the, the glass as close as possible to the nozzle on an angle, let's say about 45 degree angle, um, letting it sit, and then you're gonna pour it right where you're about maybe an inch off the top of the glass. You're gonna put it right on top of your bar, let it settle for about, let's say a minute. Um, once it's done settling, you're gonna re-pour it again, get it right to the top where everybody loves to see the beer, right on top of the glass, let it sit one more time, and then pour it one more time just to get a little bit of that cascade, little head on top of the beer. So visually, it looks different than the other taps. Is there a reason for that? Uh, yeah, so um, the other taps don't have um, a nitro ball more than anything inside of it. Um, and that's what's going to cause your beer to start to cascade. One being the carbon, uh, the nitrous in the beer, but as well as the pretty much the build of the tap itself. We have our beer taps right under us, so the line between from the keg to the beer to the tap really does matter. Um, it's a smaller line, so you're getting the freshest beer, the coldest beer as possible. So Christian, it's clear you know what you're talking about. Did you have to go through special training to handle Guinness? Guinness came and partnered with us to make sure that we, every bartender that we had behind this bar was certified to pour Guinness. We wanted to make sure we poured it properly on top of that. So they come and they show you how to hold the glass for one, how to pour a uh, beer, um, making sure all your kegs are fresh, uh, making sure your beer coolers are all cold at the right temperature that it needs to be, making sure your nitrous and your carbonation, the blending box that we have there, is set properly, so you have just enough uh, um, nitrous and carbonation in the beer to make sure you pour in the perfect Guinness. All right, so show us, how do you pour the perfect Guinness? All right. So you have to pour into the proper glass. The Guinness we use in a 20 ounce pint glass. Uh, we're, like I said, pouring on an angle, getting as close as possible to the glass, not causing it to have a lot of air. In result, if you have a lot of air, you're gonna put more bubbles, you're going to have an ugly head. So. Now it's a waiting game. <laughs> so in Ireland, uh, you have to pour Guinness in a proper Guinness certified glass. Here you are not pouring it in this. You are not pouring it in this. It has to say Guinness. It has to be a, a 20 ounce Guinness glass. So do they all look exactly like the one we're seeing here? They should. Yeah. And how do you know when it's ready? When the bartender doesn't have any more tickets. I'm like, <laughs> all right, we gotta come back to the Guinness. No, um, you start to see the meringue on top. You start, you, see, you start to see where the head's gonna be settled. And then once it's settled, you're like, all right, ready to rock and roll. And what kind of beer technically is a Guinness? I know it's all, it stands out all on its own, but is this a lager? Is it an ale? It's a light body ale. Oh, okay. Christian, thanks so much for teaching us about the perfect pour of Guinness and Slancha. Slancha.